We welcome you in the name of Jesus to this service of worship. Thank you for joining the Presbyterian Church of Morristown in worship. Let us join together in the call to worship. We dare to worship, for we have heard. We have heard the mighty voice and the whisper small and still. We dare to worship, for we have tasted. We have tasted the bread of life and the sweetness of God's grace. Let us worship God. God, our wellspring and source of life eternal, stands ready to flood our sin-sick souls with his abundant grace. Let us then lay down all that burdens us and embrace the wholeness God offers as we join in our unison prayer of confession, which will be followed by a curie and a time for personal prayer. Let us pray. You have called us to serve you with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. Too often our energy fades and we waste our intelligence. We do not have the time for imagination or the patience for love. Your hope is abundant and your truth steadfast, yet we cannot trust the depth of your grace and power. Forgive us, God of mercy, and move us to know the goodness of your reign. Amen. Let us now join and rejoice in God's assurance of pardon. My friends, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Forgiveness is a gift of God given through the name of Jesus Christ. 
we we thank thank God for for a chance chance to begin begin again. again. Good morning. Last week, we heard a story about the Passover, a time when God protected the Israelites as he sent the final plague upon the Pharaoh and all of his people. And after the Passover, Moses started to lead the Israelites away from Egypt. And they walked and they walked and they walked all night long. And in the morning, all of a sudden, right in front of them was a giant sea, huge body of water. Oh no, now they were scared. How were they gonna get across this big body of water? They didn't have any boats and they couldn't swim that far. Oh no, but Moses said to them, do not be afraid, God is with us. And just at that moment, God spoke to Moses and he said, raise your hand. And Moses did, he put his hand up and just then a huge wind came from the east and it blew the water apart and it made a pathway of dry land right through the center of the sea. Can you imagine how amazing that must have been to the Israelites? So Moses said, follow me, and off they went. And they went through this wall of water and they walked to the other side. But just as they were starting to get to the end, they turned around and they saw that the Pharaoh and his army were chasing them and coming upon them. Oh no, would they be safe? Moses kept leading them up. They finally crossed the sea and they got out of the dry bed. And just then God told Moses again, raise your hand. And as Moses raised his hand, this huge wall of water came together. The dry bed was gone and water was everywhere and all of Pharaoh's army was covered by the sea, never to be seen again. Oh my goodness, God saved them again. This story reminds us that no matter what we come up against, whatever trouble we're in, God will lead us to the other side. God will bring us through safely. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the Bible and the stories that remind us of your love and strength. Help us to rely on you to get us through hard times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer for illumination. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, Grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Lord Jesus Christ. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For this to end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The lesson from the Hebrew Bible is found in the book of Exodus. We're reading from the 14th chapter, beginning with the 19th verse. Moses and the children of Israel have left Egypt. They've gone through the desert and now they find themselves at the sea. They have no escape route and Pharaoh is about ready to approach them. Hear the word of God. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came 
between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on the dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on the right and on the left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in a pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us free from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and the chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on the right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be holy and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Do you ever feel hopeless? I have a confession that some nights I wake up and have over the last several months thinking about COVID. I worry about it's gonna come and affect somebody I love. I worry about the almost 200,000 people in America and the hundreds of thousands of people around the world who've died and the hole that is left in their families afterwards. I worry about how helpless and hopeless we feel in trying to control it. And sometimes it just feels like we've lost control, and I have. Do you ever feel that way about COVID? Do you ever feel that way about your life when you're facing some adversity and it overwhelms you? And the first words that come to your mind is, I can't. The scripture today is the most important passage probably in all of the Exodus story and maybe the Old Testament. It's certainly as important as the Ten Commandments, which we'll talk about next week. This is the crossing of the sea. A hopeless group of slaves have no escape route and yet they make it to the other side. So what happened? The old story goes like this, that a little boy went to Sunday school And he came back home and his mom said, what'd you learn? And he said, learned about Moses crossing the Red Sea. And she said, well, what happened? And she said, well, my teacher said that Moses took the people and they went across the desert and they came to the Red Sea and that's where God left them. But there was no way to go to cross. There were no ferries, no boats, nothing. And then they found out through a telephone call that the Pharaoh was coming and he was bringing all of his airplanes and his tanks and his armored car. And the troops were gonna come and take them back to Egypt. And then luckily Moses was really smart. What he did was he built a pontoon bridge across the Red Sea. And he did it just in time so the people could go across. And when they got to the other side, he radioed in an airstrike on the bridge and it blew up and all the Egyptians and the tanks went in the water and they were free to go to the Holy Land. The mother looked at him and said, is that what she said? And he said, no, not really, but you'd never believe what she told me. (laughs) That joke is as old as I am, if you haven't heard it before. 
But it reminds us that over and over and over again, the ancient Jews would tell this story of an escape that couldn't have happened, that they were looking at the water and saying, we can't, and yet they did. There's something about this story which reflects upon the transformation of these people, Jews from slaves into a people who taught us something about God that we never knew before. And ultimately, I believe it helps us understand that in the adversities of our life, God is there for us and we finally find out who we are when we face them. That's the real challenge of this story. Now, in looking at this story, and I have over the years, a couple of symbols come out to me in telling the story about what really happens. The first is water. It's really important. There was an ongoing debate in the 20th century for uh, scholars as to what body of water they really came to. In the scriptures, it usually says the Red Sea, which is a formidable piece of water. To get across, you'd need a pontoon bridge or at least Cecil B. DeMille. On the other hand, scholars would say, no, it wasn't that. They went across some marshy part in the northern part of the Nile River, and they called it the Sea of Reeds. I'm not here to tell you exactly which it was. I'm not in position. But something happened to those people who were led by Moses and actually led by God to that water. And while they were there, they were between a rock and a hard place. How in the world were they going to get to the other side? They didn't have a pontoon bridge. You see, water's important because water throughout the Bible and throughout our lives is essential. 98%, I think, of our body is water. We drink water. If I wash my hands uh, 30 seconds or sing happy birthday twice, that's better than using sanitizer. We've learned that. We baptize babies and adults with water. It's about cleansing. It's about new life. But also water has something to do with things that are terrifying, floods, Superstorm Sandy, and the issues in our life which overwhelm us. Therefore, in this story, I kind of see the people of Israel looking out over the water and being terrified. They want to know how deep the water is and how many problems they're going to face getting across. I think when we face issues in our own life, that's where we pause and we say we can't. For example, you're taking your son to the third rehab place for his alcoholism in two years. And as you're dropping him off and driving home, you're saying, I can't do this anymore. The doctor says to you, she says, you know, you've got cancer. You're going to have to go to Sloan Kettering in the city or you're going to have to do it out here for eight weeks. And we believe it'll help, but that's what you're going to have to do. And you say, I can't do this. You go home. And your wife looks at you and says, I've had it with this marriage, I'm leaving. I can't take your non-communication. And you think, I can't revisit these things anymore. When we look at the adversity that is before us and we say, I can't, we're stuck on the seashore and there is no transformation. We need to know how deep the water is, but sometimes it terrifies us. The second of these images I wanna give you is the staff of Moses. There is really two stories here. They're woven together. The first story, the older one, says that it was God through a east wind which parted the waters. The second story, which was written sometime afterwards, says it was Moses lifting up his hand, and of course, that's the staff. Could somebody tell me who's right? Is it Moses who did it or God? Well, maybe it was both of them. I think the power of this story is however they got through this water, it was a cooperation between the power of God and Moses. There is no way we face the things we face all by ourselves. We can't. We'll drown. We won't be able to get to the other side. That, I think, is the challenge of this passage as we try our best to understand the way through. It's a cooperation. Do you believe that God can give you the power to face the things you have to face, the problems with the marriage, a son who just can't stop drinking? Do you think that God can help us through this pandemic? And do you think God has provided the resources to go forward, like the people who love you, the counselors who lead you, the pastors who preach to you, 
the children who inspire you? Isn't there a whole constellation of people who God provides for you? The only way we're gonna face the adversity that lies ahead is to go from I can't to we can. And God and Moses provide that for the people. The third is a really subtle point here. The people of Israel never had stained glass windows. They didn't have what's behind me. They didn't have statues. The second commandment says that you can't do that. No graven image. The closest they come in this story is that it's a pillar of cloud by day that they follow, and it's a pillar of uh, fire at night, which they follow as well. And it's the way in which they say the presence of God brought them to the water. You know, if I was with them, I wonder, what are you doing, God, leaving me here? There's no way out. But notice that this passage starts with the pillar of cloud moves from in front, blocking their way into the sea, to behind. And two things happen. It's protection from Pharaoh and all his tanks and armored cars. But it also, I see, is God pushing them into the water, giving them a big kick and saying, you're not going home, you're going forward. Because when we finally say we can, God's waiting for us to say, I will. I will go forward. We feel like we're victims, that there's nothing we can do, that whatever the obstacles are, we're never gonna get through it. God can provide us all the resources in the world, but if we're not willing to face what we have to face, be forgiven for what we need to be forgiven for, we'll never be transformed and we'll be stuck on the beach, just like the people of Israel. I believe that these symbols help us not only in our personal lives, they remind us of what happened to the people of Israel. They were hopeless slaves, afraid to go into the water. They, they looked at how deep it was, but they were able to rely on the cooperation of an east wind and the staff of Moses to give them a way through. When they got to the other side, they weren't perfect, but they were transformed into what? A group of people who would go to the Holy Land who teach Western civilization who God really is, who, by the way, would write the Bible and provide a tradition from which our Savior was raised. As I thought about this in conclusion, I think America is standing on the edge right now. I think we're looking how deep the water is. Let's face it, the pandemic has shaken us. We are worried. We don't know how deep the waters are. We worry we're gonna get it. We haven't been in sanctuary forever. Our kids, we hope they don't get sick at school. Some kids are being thrown out of college without tuition back because they're partying. The world is different and we wonder what it's gonna be like. How deep is that water? And then we've got an economic downturn. We don't even know the implications of that where people now not only don't have jobs, but they don't have the health care, And maybe they didn't have it before, but COVID has made us look at this. You see, there were promises that this country makes to its citizens that many times we don't provide. And this has given us a chance to look hard at the water before us. Can we get through? And then there is the challenge of a promise made a long time ago that this nation would embrace its diversity, that it would welcome immigrants. And yet we have a history of slavery, of white privilege, of segregation, of what happened to Native Americans. All of those things are things we have to confront at one time or another or at different times in our history. Why can't we look at them now? Perhaps it's because We've never been as divided as we are, that we don't listen to each other, that we're cruel to one another. Why can't we retell the story and live the morals and the teachings of Jesus to show compassion towards the person who doesn't think like us and find ways in which we can together slog through this mud and be transformed in the end? As we face what we have to at this time in the uncertainty I don't know whether we're hopeless, but we're scared. May we have the courage to see that right up ahead, 
God sent an east wind and Moses is raising his hand and there's a way through and it's going to be hard. When we get to the other side, we're not going to be perfect, but wouldn't it be wonderful if we actually dealt with these issues? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we were transformed to another level of what America is? And if that happens, wouldn't that be a story our grandkids could tell about us? Amen. Let us now open our hearts and minds in prayer to God. O oh God, your unfailing love is the source of our strength. Even now, you are leading us through troubled waters and guiding us toward an unknown but promise-filled future. When weariness overtakes us, grant us the rest we need. When hopelessness bows us down, fill us again with your hope. When fear governs our thoughts, soothe us with your steadfast calm. When change feels too threatening, so we revert to old unhelpful patterns, renew us with your spirit. We entrust our lives to you, merciful one, knowing that we live and die not to ourselves, but to the Lord. Hear us then as we share the cares and concerns of our hearts and pray for the needs of our world. Pour out your mercy, O God, upon all impacted by hurricanes or wildfires. Grant them strength, protect them from harm, and speed the assistance that they need. Sustain the firefighters and relief workers as they toil daily on behalf of others. Provide for their physical, emotional, and spiritual needs and for those of their families so that they may continue to serve faithfully. And as we watch unfold such devastation of the natural world, renew in us a greater commitment to care for the earth. Guide us to heal the damage we have done to our ecosystems. Free us from narrow vision, a narrow vision that tells us there is no other way. And inspire us to change the ways that we misuse your natural gifts. As this most unusual school year begins, source of all knowledge, we pray that your saving and guiding hand will be upon all of our students, educators, support staff, and administrators. Breathe calm, compassion, and patience into each of them as they collectively face obstacles, frustrations, and fears. Bolster their efforts at effective teaching and learning and pave the way for even more creative solutions to improve access to quality education for all students, regardless of their access to technology or their parents' ability to stay home and help them. And above all, keep everyone safe. We pray for the Universal Church, that it would be an instrument of your love, forgiveness, and grace. And for us here in Morristown, continue to teach us how to best be church in this new reality. Comfort us when we feel all the emotions and uncertainties of transition, and plant in us the seeds of the future you want for us and for our wider community. And we lift before you all those who suffer in their minds, bodies, or souls. Wrap your arms around them in love and help us be all that they need. Hear our prayers for Lloyd and Beverly, Carolyn and Hal, Bill, Bernie and Betty, and all those who occupy our hearts and minds this day. Fill us now with your hope, O Lord, and sustain us by your love, today and always. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>